Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Nazala Reddy, and uh, I'm from Datrium, one of the co-founders, and also I'm an engineer at Datrium. I'll talk about the VDI, uh, as, the as the title says, about the cost, some of the cost factors over there. But before that, you know, we talked to a lot of customers, and they keep telling us that there is fundamentally still a VDI problem in, the en in their environment. So what we bring, Datrium brings to the, to, the, to, the, to the story is we are a new type of convergence and how do we kind of want to solve this particular problem. So let's just summarize uh, just briefly before we go into what, the, what Datrium does for the VDI, let's just briefly review some of the issues we face. So talking to customers, you know, one of the issues they face is that you have all these VMs in your VDI environment, or generally VM environment, and you, know, you boot up some VMs, but they're talking to everybody else, and they're all interfering with some other VMs in your system. You have hundreds of VMs, thousands of VMs. You boot up some VMs, everybody's affected by that. Some VM is doing something, everybody's affected by that. So it's, that seems like a common problem everybody has. So then, now that you have problems, the thing people do is, how do I debug my problems? How do I triage where my bottleneck is? Then, do you blame the server? Do I blame the network? Do I blame the array? Like, you know, so they have no idea how to triage the problem and how to fix it. And then since they, it's hard to triage that problem, then the easy answer is to throw money at the solution, is that you buy a lot of expensive hardware and then hope that the problem goes away. And when you buy expensive hardware, ultimately it leads to the problem that you can't really deploy VDI because it just becomes too expensive for you. So, you know, given these problems, like, you know, so what has happened in the industry? If you look at the industry, you know, in the last, like, a decade or so, or a little bit longer than that, like, there are three pieces to a VM infrastructure. There is the, where the VMs run, the servers, and there is the I.O. processing, like, RAID and dedupe and compression, which has happened in the last 10 years. And ultimately, there is the capacity tier where you just store the bits. So there are these three pieces. You can mix and match. You can, you know, there are only three pieces to mix and match. So... In the past, uh, there was this uh, you know, legacy converged infrastructure, like FlexPod or uh, even EMC has something called vBlock. So it's a nice, simple way to look at it, but the problem is that the problems remain the same. Like they have servers, it's some reference architecture, but ultimately the SAN is still the bottleneck in this picture. Everybody's talking to the same SAN, you boot up some VMs, it's the same problem. You're not gonna get away from that problem. It looks nice from package point of view, but it's the same issues. Uh, then, in the last five years, there is this new hyper-converged things which has come up, like Nutanix, or friends from Nutanix, or SimpliVity, some other examples like that. I mean, so they have done something, an evolution in this, is that they have packaged all the servers, server computing power, the, the storage computing power, and the storage together into this one server package. It looks nice, and uh, at a three or four nodes, it looks pretty good because it's just easy to manage. But the issues, I'll tell you the issues with that. So firstly, by packaging all of this together, you end up paying a lot of money for your, for your servers also because you're getting, you have to pay array vendor prices, margins for these servers. So that's number one, you pay for it. And secondly, storage is it's sticky. You know, storage is not something you want to move around too much. So if you bring your server into maintenance mode, because you know you have a VMware patch, you apply a patch, and then your server is in VM, you know, in a maintenance mode. The thing is that your storage is lost temporarily for maybe a day, two days. Then the the other part of the array has to rebuild all that data to make up for that loss of the of the server you lost. So that's like that's like a lot of movement of data, and and then ultimately it impacts all your VMs. See. The idea is that you want to isolate your VM performance, but these, in this picture, it is even worse because everybody's talking to everybody in this picture because to write the data, you write to everybody else. And then so you end up talking to every other server out there. Um, so it actually becomes worse. So if debugging the problem in your previous picture was harder, but this is even more harder to debug the problem. So it's more expensive. And you pay, array, you pay array, array vendors margins for servers, which you can get commodity from Dell or somebody else. And it's hard to debug performance. And ultimately, it's kind of like it makes your VMs all be talking to each other all the time. So that's the model which we had for the last five years. So you know, looking at these two, there is a third way of doing this is that, see, what you want is that your performance to all come locally from you. Like if you have Flash, 
why do you want to put it far away from you? So if you put the flash far away from you, it's still the same problem like a sand. You put it far away, it's far away, you know. So you want to bring the active flash close to you, and you want to bring the performance close to you. So, and you want isolation. So the third picture over there, it's the new way of doing convergence, is that you put the I.O. processing of your storage, and you put your VM compute and your flash together all locally in a nice package and let the durable bits be far away. See, that wants to be durable, that wants to be sticky, that wants to be stable. So you want that to be like simple, low cost, and simple like that. So what we do, Datrium does, is that we provide this simple, low cost uh, storage system at the back end, which we, which we sell, and then we also give you license, uh, a kind of, uh, uh, like it's, it comes to the packages that you get this software, you run on your servers, and that helps you, enables this new convergence model. So I'll give an example how this works. So let's take an example of a 1,000 VM uh, data center, which is not uncommon. You have 1,000 VMs. You, know, you have pods of uh, 1,000 VMs. So in this case, you have all these different kinds of VMs. Like you know, Generally, people don't have, sometimes people have different kinds of VMs. Like there are these CAD VMs, which are very intense. And sometimes you have the office desktop, which are kind of medium. So you want to mix and match what you want to do. In some use, so you know, if you look at the, normal SAN, this is going to be a problem because you boot up these, these normal desktops, they're going, to, they're going to interfere with your CAD programs because those are the ones you want to make sure that they don't get touched by anybody else, but because everybody's sharing the same stuff and then they end up having to deal with this issue. So with Datrium, what you get is the following, that you get this persistent uh, uh, shelf, which is just simple low-cost storage, which is where all the bits are stored. And you can buy any server you want from any vendor you like. And with, a, with, with one click, our software installs as a web install in all these servers. And you buy, you know, you get a flash drive from your server vendor. So you're getting all these for like pretty like low cost because the server vendors charge low margins than compared to array, array vendors. I'm sure you know this. From, if, you, if you talk to EMC guys, they'll tell you that. Uh, so, for like one terabyte SSD these days cost like less than like thousand bucks, and uh, with our software and with our dedupe and compression, you get like five x. These days, five x is not uncommon. So one terabyte becomes this five terabytes of SSD on your local host. So no I/O has to ever leave generally your local server. So all your performance is local. You never talk to anybody else in the in this in this environment. You can buy any servers you want. So now in this example, you can have like the medium, medium servers for like VDI, you know, some office desktops, and you can buy this beefy like a Dell, you know, with those GPUs for your CAD programs, and they'll all work fine because they don't talk to each other. So ultimately, you know, it leads to this isolation, performance isolation for each one, and ultimately you have this simple storage system, you can store your bits. So, you know, so here's a graph, I'll show you, show you the graph here. Um, if you boot up 100 VMs, you have one server, you have 100 VMs, you boot up. So the latency is a number. You get a latency number from any SAN vendor. You boot up four servers with the 400 VMs, everybody is going to have a performance issue because it kind of exponentially decreases, the, the performance decreases as you add more hosts. But that is not true for us because every server is self kind of driven. Like every server comes with their own performance. So as you add more hosts, you boot up 400 VMs with four, with four hosts, it just, they're all local. There is no performance degradation in this picture. And so if some of the bullet points over there, I'll just, I'll just talk about them a little bit. So in a legacy SAN, there's LUNs to manage. We have no LUNs. It's all one data store. It's very easy to manage. Um, and there's performance isolation between each host because we don't talk to everybody else. And because the flash is local, which is where it wants to be, like you know, the cost factor and everything else, you want to have the flash be very local to you, and that gives you the, uh, the benefits of the uh, flash. And the last one is that, do you want to be locked in to what servers you can buy? If you go with the hyperconverged, you cannot end up getting locked in with the servers your hyperconverged vendor will sell you at a very high price when Dell and HP can sell you at a much lower price, why well, you want to choose something else. So we enable that model where you can buy any servers you want because there are people who have different kind of requirements for their environments. Um, so ultimately, what, what all this leads to is, you know, 
how does it affect you? Like ultimately, like the, the simplicity, there is the performance isolation from each other, and less to less to debug and think about every day, but also ultimately your your capex. So, you know, we did the modeling on this, and it's kind of turns out to be one fourth. Our solution turns out to be one fourth the cost, as compared to like any other leading hyperconverged vendor. And it, com it primarily the cost factor is comes from like you know you have to buy your server, you have to buy a flash. So where do you get it from? Like you know how much do you pay money for all all of these components? You want to basically optimize for that, and also to optimize for the performance isolation between each of the VMs, because ultimately so there's a capex and there's the opex. The opex is about in a daily life, do I have to think about my performance every day? Like, is it just simple to manage my performance? Do I manage my performance like I manage my VMs? Or do I manage my performance like I manage like some LUN, uh, the legacy stuff? So I think we have a pretty compelling story. So just to summarize at the end is that what Datrium does is that we are a new converged type of system. We tell you a simple storage box, which is, has low cost. It stores the bits. And all our software runs on the servers and leverages your local CPU and your local flash to give you the benefits of performance isolation and have the highest performance you can possibly have. It's simple, it's easy, and it's a new convergence model. Thank you.